Welcome to What's New in Android, your source for key Android announcements at I.O. We'll be covering Android 14 updates around privacy and security, personalization, foreground services, machine learning, and providing high quality user experiences, as well as form factors such as wearables, foldables, tablets, TVs, cars, and more. With new platform capabilities, premium hardware and form factors, this means your users expect a lot more. So, We'll go over how we're helping you with updates in modern Android development, such as new features in Jetpack Compose, new tools in Android Studio, and updated architecture guidances helping you build faster and more awesome apps. Let's get started with what's new in privacy and security in Android 14. Android continues to provide a safer device environment with new functionality, creating a deep level of security for your app and privacy for your users. In particular, I wanted to highlight a few of the latest changes in Android 14. Users can grant partial access to visual media when your app requests for permission. If users select partial access, only those selected files will be accessible to the app via the media store. So to avoid additional complexities, we strongly encourage you to choose the photo picker instead of requesting storage access. But if maintaining embedded UX control of storage is critical for your app, you must make the relevant changes to your permission handling logic to avoid access issues. We are introducing more data safety information. Starting with the location permission dialog, users will see a new clickable section that highlights when apps share users' location data with third parties. When clicking on this section, users can better understand why the app is sharing this data. Access to full screen notifications are also changing on the lock screen. Starting in Android 14, apps need to check for the FSI permission and or request it from the user. App stores will have a policy enforcement which is not target SDK gated, such that only calling and alarm apps across the ecosystem should have the permission to use FSIs out of the box. Protecting Android users is a shared responsibility between the Android platform and apps. The largest security changes you need to be aware of are in Android 14, revolve around helping to protect against unintended interactions between your app and other apps. So make sure that you create an explicit intent if you want to deliver to unexported components. Apps targeting SDK level 34 must specify receiver exported or receiver not exported when registering a runtime receiver for non-system broadcasts. From Android 14, apps with the target SDK version below 23 cannot be installed. Requiring apps to meet this minimum target API level requirement improves security and privacy for users. For more, check out what's new in Android privacy and security. Partial screen sharing is an update to media projection we're working on. Instead of always sharing the entire screen, users will be able to share just a specific app which is great when multitasking with an app and a video call. If you're using the existing capture method, users will get this behavior by default, regardless of target SDK version. As on Android 14, this method is equivalent to the new method configured to give the user the choice. You can also restrict the user to only allow or deny capturing the entire screen. Android 14 also introduces two new methods to the media projection callback to get updates when the size of the captured content changes, which may happen when the user changes the multi-window mode sizing, and when the capture content is visible. This can be useful to save screen space in the capturing app to avoid showing the shared content if the user can still see it in another window. Health Connect allows apps to have a single on-device repository for user health data. It allows users to have a single place to view their data, configure privacy controls, and share data between their favorite apps. Starting in Android 14, Health Connect will be built into the platform via Google Play system updates, with privacy controls integrated into the system settings. This allows for frequent updates to Health Connect, and you can rely on Health Connect to be available as the default on-device data store on Android devices to connect health data between apps starting with Android 14. To learn more about Health Connect and other upcoming features for health services on Wear OS, check out the What's New in Android Health Talk. Passwords suck. Android 14 helps apps and users transition to a passwordless world using passkeys, 
a new form of authentication based on industry standards that is a safe replacement to passwords and other fishable authentication methods. Passkeys leverage familiar patterns like a biometric check or screen unlock, which can create quicker sign-in experiences for users and can increase sign-in rates. And the best part? Passkeys give users access to their apps wherever they want and are supported by mobile platforms and browsers. Android's Credential Manager brings together passkeys and traditional sign-in methods, such as passwords and federated sign-in, into a consolidated interface for the user and a unified API for developers, making handling authentication easier. The new Jetpack Credential Manager library, currently in alpha, is supported on Android 4.4 and higher, and passkeys are supported on Android 5 and higher. To register a user credential as the passkey, the app calls the create credential method to the credential store. This saves the generated passkey in the user's password manager, and the public key credential information is returned to the app as a credential object. Now, since the user has created the passkey, they can use it to authenticate when they sign into your app. To understand how to create passkeys and authenticating a user, check out Reduce Reliance on Passwords in Android Apps with Passkey Support. Privacy Sandbox for Android has been focused on increasing the privacy standards for users on mobile devices while maintaining advertising quality, which can continue to support a thriving ecosystem of ad-supported apps. There are two programs that you can use to get started, the developer preview for the latest features or the beta program for a more stable experience. We have released new tools to help test the impact of the Privacy Sandbox without requiring a solution in production, and have added Jetpack support for beta releases, making the integration with the Privacy Sandbox easier. After you add the Jetpack dependency to your project in your build file, you can check for the availability of the Privacy Sandbox at runtime with the Obtain function when you call the APIs. The Privacy Sandbox can work together across web and mobile platforms to provide valuable data insights and perform more accurate attribution. Cross-web and app attribution is currently available on Chrome and Android platforms. As you implement attribution on the web, you can use request headers to determine if OS-level support is available and then delegate to the OS to perform attribution. This allows for conversion made on an app to be attributed to ads shown on the web and vice versa. To find out more about new features on the Privacy Sandbox, how cross-web and app attribution works, and to learn about the new enrollment process we're rolling out in June, check out Getting Started with Attribution Reporting and 10 Things to Know About Privacy Sandbox on Android. Android is running on more types of devices than ever, from phones to tablets to foldables to laptops to cars to TVs to watches and we have some exciting new features for all of them. The Pixel Fold that we announced today, along with the upcoming Pixel Tablet, are joining the growing family of large screen Android devices. These form factors make it easier for users to multitask, aided by refinements in the platform to the taskbar and stylus. The broader ranges of possible screen sizes and configurations might break some assumptions apps were previously making. There are two key areas in particular that impact all apps, app compatibility mode and camera. First, Users can place all apps into multi-window mode, and users can rotate their device to landscape or portrait regardless of an app's configuration. If apps restrict themselves to a fixed orientation or declare that they aren't resizable, they will be placed into an app compatibility mode and letterboxed by the system. We recommend unlocking your activity orientations and making them resizable by default to be able to use all the space available to your app to avoid being letterboxed. To make it easier to unlock resizing and orientation, We've also been refining the documentation for how to correctly handle configuration changes and save UI state to ensure your users have a great experience. The second key area involves the camera. With new foldable devices and letterboxing, it's no longer valid to assume that the aspect ratio and orientation of your UI matches the aspect ratio and orientation of the camera sensor. If you are making that assumption, your previews might be rotated or stretched. There are Jetpack libraries for camera previews, both for camera X and camera 2, that help handle the necessary logic around orientation and device changes. How to build high-quality camera experiences covers the aspect ratio issue in more detail, and also introduces some new rear display APIs that full devices can use to take pictures from the main camera sensors with the cover screen. 
To get a general overview of how your apps will work beyond the phone, watch Developing High Quality Apps for Large Screens and Foldables, which goes deeper into large screen support, improving your user experience by making use of extra screen real estate and unique device features once your app is handling configuration changes well. For existing multi-activity apps, activity embedding is an easy way to implement adaptive layouts by allowing more than one activity to be displayed side by side. This is configured via XML with minimal architecture and code refactoring, leaving the existing behavior unchanged when activity embedding is not supported. There are also new APIs for cross-app activity embedding to allow embedding activities from other trusted applications. The activity embedding talk provides an overview of the APIs and configuration options that apps like eBay, Timu, and WhatsApp are using to implement activity embedding. Large screens also provide a great opportunity for games that can take advantage of keyboards, mice, and gamepads across tablets, Chromebooks, and other desktop devices. In Level Up, Build Great Games for Large Screens, learn how to make sure your app is available across all of these devices, with specific tips to best handle the different form factors your game is running on. Beyond the health updates mentioned earlier, there are more announcements for Wear OS 2. Since the launch of Wear OS 3, we've been working to improve the platform with consistent updates, resulting in better battery life and improved functionality on your current watches. And with the new Wear OS version arriving later this year, we'll bring even more enhancements for the next generation of watches. To help inspire you for what your app may look like on Wear OS, we are publishing an inspirational gallery of screens that meet the Wear OS quality guidelines. We are also announcing the new watch face format, a new way to build watch faces for Wear OS, which takes care of code optimizations and battery performance for you. To learn which surfaces are available to your Wear OS app and which use cases are best suited for each of them, watch How to Build High Quality Experiences on Wear OS. We have some updates for Android Automotive OS for a new category of apps broadly available to develop. Video apps can run on parked cars running Android Automotive. This can be done with almost the same code that is powering your mobile app. So large screen optimizations for foldables and tablets will also improve the user experience on the built-in car screen. Check out what's new with Android for Cars to get the full set of updates for both Android Auto and Android Automotive OS. To help build across multiple form factors, I'm excited to announce that Jetpack Glance is now in beta. It abstracts you from the complexities of working directly with remote views using the declarative syntax from Jetpack Compose facilitating the development of adaptive widgets for different form factors. To see an example of building a widget using Glance, take a look at the building for the future of Android. Jetpack Compose is Android's modern toolkit for building native UI. Since we released the first Compose bill of materials in October last year, we've been working on new features, bug fixes, performance improvements, and bringing Compose to everywhere you build UI. The initial release of Compose focused on mobile development. And last July, we launched Compose for Wear OS, bringing Android's modern toolkit to another platform with UI optimized for the watch. Now, Compose for TV is available in Alpha, which makes building native TV apps easier and more efficient with less code by providing a library of components that are optimized for TV, including things like top and side navigation, featured carousel, and scrollable containers, while also supporting TV-specific use cases like focusability. These components are easily customizable, so you can build apps that match your desired designs. We're looking forward to your feedback on Compose for TV. For a full walkthrough of the Compose for TV APIs and the other updates for Android on TV, check out the What's New with TV and Intro to Compose talk. Compose for mobile, Wear, and TV all use the same runtime and foundational systems, which means you can use the same testing APIs, Android Studio tools like Previews and Layout Inspector, and all three platforms will see the benefits of performance optimizations under the hood. Last October, we started migrating modifiers to a new and more efficient system. For text alone, this work resulted in an average 22% performance gain that could be seen in the May 2023 release. But these improvements apply across the board. The best thing about this is that you don't have to change the way you use modifiers. Just update your version of Compose to see these gains. Lots of improvements in text have also landed like support for the latest emoji version. So now your users can be even more expressive. It also introduces customization features such as outlining text, hyphenation support, configuring line breaking behavior, and bug fixes. New layouts have also been introduced to support complex design use cases. The new pager layout allows you to horizontally or vertically flip through content similar to view pager and views. Whereas the new flow layout allows you to arrange content in a vertical or horizontal flow, much like lines of text in a paragraph. 
Additional libraries have also added support for Compose, like Glide and Google Maps, making it simpler for you to integrate these libraries within Compose. Let's talk about the latest version of Material Design, Material 3. The latest version of Compose Material 3, version 1.1, provides highly requested new components like bottom sheets, date and time pickers, search bars, tool tips, and more. Learn more about new enhancements and updates in Build Modern Android Apps with Material U for Compose. There, you'll learn about new components added in M3, how you can migrate to it from M2, and how accessibility is a foundational pillar for Material 3. Android Studio Giraffe has Compose tooling improvements, features such as Live Edit being enabled by default, and animation preview support for Compose APIs enable you to iterate much faster. In the Canary version of Android Studio, Hedgehog, new features like showing Compose state information in the debugger, multi-preview templates, visual lint, and accessibility test framework support for previews are all new tools to help you build better apps. To learn more about Compose at I.O., don't miss the talk on Jetpack Compose debugging. This talk goes over a mental framework for how you can debug and fix issues in your app. It shows you how to define the problem you're trying to solve, reproduce it by writing a test, validate your assumptions by using tools like the new debugger, which shows Compose state information, and ultimately fix the issue you are facing. In Android 14, we are bringing changes to foreground services. Apps targeting Android 14 require declared types to run a foreground service, along with new type-specific foreground service permissions. Foreground services are useful for user-initiated, long-running tasks that keep going while you're doing something else, for example, navigation or workout tracking. As an alternative to foreground services, in Android 14, we are introducing a new purpose-built API for user-initiated data transfer which has long-running capabilities, along with job features such as constraint matching and rescheduling. Specifying foreground service types help clarify supported foreground service use cases. Here's how you add the new type-specific permissions and required foreground service type in your manifest. For more on running in the background, including the complete list of foreground service permissions and types, check out Building for the Future of Android Talk. In Android 14, we are bringing updates to make your app smarter. First, MLKit. It is a set of production-ready machine learning APIs that enable common ML use cases in your app. Check out the latest updates in Android 14 to the existing APIs, along with two brand new APIs, FaceMesh and Document Scanner. For greater control, you can use Android's custom ML stack to bring your own ML models to your app and reduce APK size. We have made three major updates to help you address your ML pain points. In particular, the new acceleration service is now in beta. We created this new API to help you find the optimal hardware acceleration configuration for your model at runtime. For more information, check out Build Smarter Android Apps with on-device machine learning. The latest version of the Android Runtime, Art 14, introduces improvements such as support version 17 of the Java language and a new garbage collector, which results in a 10% reduction in code size and up to 50% in peak heap memory. Over the past few years, we've also been investing in updatability. For example, in the current Art version, R13, we're able to update Android 12 devices, resulting in up to 30% app startup time improvement. With our investments in updatability, we're making the Android ecosystem more sustainable by making devices better over time through Google system updates. With Art 14, devices running Android 12 and later can receive the latest Art features, and we project that this will benefit over 1 billion devices worldwide. One of the languages supported by Art is my personal favorite, Kotlin. Since Kotlin was made an officially supported language, it's made development faster and, frankly, a lot more fun. Get the latest updates on Kotlin in the What's New in Kotlin for Android talk. The talk covers topics like the new K2 compiler, which can speed up builds twice as fast, Android Studio support for Kotlin script so that you can use Kotlin in your build files, the advantages of migrating over to use Kotlin symbol processing instead of CAP, and ongoing efforts to support Kotlin on multiple platforms. To help you build polished user experiences, Android has you covered. 
Since Android 13, we have been working on Predictive Back to improve gesture navigation, giving a preview of where users are going as they swipe back, yielding a more high quality experience and helping prevent users accidentally leaving your app. In Android 14, we are adding predictive animations to your app with cross-activity animations, as well as having out-of-the-box support for many material components. One cool thing to help you migrate in Android 14 is that you can opt in individual activities, so you can focus on migrating the journeys that are most important to your app first. Opting in gives apps both the back-to-home animation and the cross-activity animation. Simply upgrade your Android X activity dependency to the latest version and use backhandler for compose or on back press callback with the on back press dispatcher for views. To see more migration paths and how to run animations, check out Building for the Future of Android. We want to help you create beautiful and modern apps, so we are launching a brand new design hub on developers.android.com a centralized place to understand designing for Android across multiple form factors and to download starter kits. This is just the beginning. Android 14 adds support for HDR 10-bit compressed still images, which retain more of the information from the sensor when taking a photo, resulting in higher quality images. It gives users the ability to be more flexible when editing in post, as there are more colors that can be recovered. And we've designed a backwards compatible JPEG slash R format for Ultra HDR. In more media updates, the stable 1.0 version of the Jetpack Media 3 library was recently released, which includes APIs for editing HDR video and tone mapping down to SDR. Check out the Transformer module for your video editing and transcoding needs. Media 3 is also where you'll find the latest version of familiar APIs like ExoPlayer and Media Session that are backwards compatible, customizable, and easier to use. Updates to these APIs make it easier for you to build rich media experiences. For example, the updated Media Session API makes it easier to keep your playback state and metadata up to date, so you can have higher quality integrations with platforms like Android Auto, Wear OS, and Android TV. For even more features and changes, check out High Quality Android Media Experiences and How to Build High Quality Camera Experiences. In Android 14, we are bringing more APIs and tooling updates to help you create a more personal and relevant app. Android Studio Giraffe or above supports automatic generation of the locale files for you, making it easier to integrate the Power App Language Preferences feature from Android 13. And then in Android 14, you can configure a more relevant set of languages that a user sees in their settings using the new Locale Manager API. And finally, in Android 14, users can choose their preferred temperature unit and first day of the week. So for me, as someone from the UK living in the US, I prefer my temperature units to be in Celsius rather than Fahrenheit. And for apps to treat Monday as the beginning of the week instead of the US default of Sunday. Check out the new backward compatible locale preferences library to enable this. In gendered languages such as Arabic, Hindi, or Spanish, words inflect or change according to the gender of the person being referred to. The default inflection is often masculine, but this may feel less relatable to other genders. So in Android 14, we are adding the Grammatical Inflection API, which supports the creation of new gender-qualified string resources, such as feminine, masculine, and neutral alternatives. For more details on how to configure these changes in Android Studio and ensure that your app is more relatable for your users, check out Building for Future of Android. Customization changes are coming to how apps share information, making it more relevant to your app and to your user. First, the system share sheet now supports custom app actions. These custom app actions are expressed using the new Chooser Action class. Second, there is a new preview UI. And third, improved ranking quality with the direct share targets to help suggest more relevant contacts. The new signal to provide for ranking is to report the shortcut usage by calling push dynamic shortcut when the user sends a message to a contact and attach corresponding capability actions.intent.send message. Android 14 adds nonlinear font scaling up to 200% which scales up larger text at a slower rate than hard-to-read small text in response to user preferences. 
This means you should avoid static scaled pixel calculations and make sure to use type value methods to convert between scaled pixel and pixel units. There are a host of new accessibility APIs being introduced in Android 14, helping protect users and improve talkback, including APIs that limit visibility of sensitive data to accessibility services, allow UI elements in the app to request accessibility focus when a window first appears, and allow UI elements to specify the frequency of talkback announcements. This can be useful for an element that frequently updates, such as a timer or a video progress bar. What's new in Android accessibility goes into a lot more details on the changes coming in Android 14, such as the new visual lint tool to help you identify potential accessibility issues in your app. Speaking of tools, Android Studio preview versions introduce a lot more tools to help you build quality apps. Android Studio Giraffe adds features like a new device explorer, adding an option to use Kotlin script for build scripts, using version catalogs by default for new projects, and more. Giraffe also has a new refresh UI that reduces visual clutter so you can focus on your code. You can opt in to see this in the settings page. In the Canary build of the next generation of Android Studio, Hedgehog, new and exciting tools have been added, such as StudioBot, a new AI assistant to help you code and learn best practices, improved support for baseline profiles with a new Gradle plugin, even more useful crash insights in app quality insights, and more. My favorite new feature on Hedgehog is StudioBot. StudioBot brings the power of conversational AI all integrated within the IDE. So you can ask it questions like, show me how to write a list in Jetpack Compose, and StudioBot responds with a code snippet and an explanation of what it does. Pretty neat, right? App Quality Insights already helps you fix crashes by showing Firebase Crashlytics issues within the IDE. With the addition of Android Vitals integration, you can now gain deeper insights by accessing crash data from a wide range of devices to give you more context on what might be causing a crash. Baseline profiles already improve startup time, reduce jank, and overall enhance the UI performance of apps. With Android Gradle Plugin 8, we improve baseline profile efficiency even further, ensuring included rules get reliably picked up. With new developments using R8 and enabling DEX reordering, we now see even more improvements during app startup of around 60%. That's double the improvement of the previous app startup time with baseline profiles. DEX reordering works by optimizing your app's DEX files by using your startup baseline profile to add all code required for startup into the primary classes.dex file while moving all non-startup code outside of it. Apart from app startup, we measured up to 40% gains in UI performance overall. With AGP8, you can have multiple source baseline profiles, making it easier for you to maintain. The new baseline profile Gradle plugin and baseline profile module template in Android Studio Hedgehog also help you add baseline profiles automatically by generating one for your app. To learn more about new tools to help you build quality apps faster, check out the What's New in Android Development Tools talk. There, you'll see a breakdown of the tools we released since last I.O. and a demo of the new features in Android Studio. We continue to update Jetpack libraries and documentation pages to help you follow best practices and build robust apps. Kotlin multi-platform can enable sharing the business logic between Android and iOS. If you're using Kotlin multi-platform, we're helping you build your apps by making some Jetpack libraries, such as annotations, collections, and data store, available for multi-platform use. We continue to update and add new architecture guidances, such as best practices for handling config changes. These guidances capture our recommended approach to structuring your code so that it can be easy to maintain, scale, and test. To learn more about architecture best practices, check out the talk on saving UI state on Android. Saving UI state on Android goes over the different ways your app can lose UI state, like during config changes, when the system needs to reclaim resources, and during app dismissal. Learn about best practices to handle saving state in these different scenarios so that when your users return to your app, state is restored correctly. Writing tests are crucial to verify that your code behaves as you expect. The Paging Test Library introduces new test APIs, so you can write test cases for UI that displays paged data. To learn more about testing best practices, check out the Saving UI State on Android talk, as well as two more talks, How to Test Across All Screen Sizes and Scalable UI Testing Solutions. Android Studio already has desktop, foldable, and resizable emulators for checking how your app currently behaves on multiple types of devices. And you can learn what to test for and how to combine these emulators with automated tests 
and how to test across all screen sizes. In scalable UI testing, learn how you can make UI testing more effective across form factors. You'll learn about the new Espresso Device API, which allows your tests to control virtual devices and trigger configuration changes in a synchronous way, Gradle Managed Devices, with added support for Firebase Test Lab, which allows you to seamlessly scale executing tests on a variety of virtual and physical devices, and finally, how you can convert your composed previews to host-side screenshot tests so that you can get visual feedback on code changes across a number of screen sizes. And that's it. We've covered lots on what's new in Android 14, from privacy and security updates like Credential Manager and Privacy Sandbox, foreground service changes, personalization updates like the Grammatical Inflection API and Share Sheet changes, and how Android can help you provide a high quality user experience with Predictive Back and Media 3. To new screens and form factors with tools and guidance to help you build awesome Android apps. Make sure to check out our documentation at developer.android.com to learn more. And don't miss the workshops and new code labs at I.O. to get your hands on these new announcements. Enjoy the rest of I.O. That was a piece of cake. <laughs>